everybody it's your boy Shazui and welcome back to another video thank you for joining me yet again and thank you so much for your continued support if you're new to this channel and you're clicking on me for the very first time please be sure to like comment and subscribe and also turn on the post notification button so that you get notified every time I upload a new video with that being said let's get straight into today's content okay let's do it Hope everybody's been doing well. Um, I've been doing all right. I haven't posted in quite a bit. I'm busy or I've just been too tired. It's always between those two or maybe both. Who knows? Uh, but yeah, I had a good weekend. As you can tell, this is not a tattoo, but I did get henna and you know, it, it's really cool. I love henna. You know, it's like Indian such Middle East um, tattoos that you can get. It's really cool stuff. I wanna get more of this. I've got it before and I got it again last weekend um, for the celebration called Navate. So that was really cool. Um, but yeah, I had, a, I had a good weekend. So let's get into today's uh, content and, um, you know, get this each pop in. Okay? So as you can tell by the title of today's video, we're going to be talking about veganism and, you know, vegetarianism as a whole. So. We're gonna be answering the question of should we all be vegan? Hashtag save the planet. So should we change our diets um, in order to save the planet? Basically, you know, it's as simple as it sounds. Um, it's not actually as simple as it sounds, but that's the basic question, which is a simple question. Mm. Now, I'm gonna, before I even give you guys my answer, um, let's get straight into what inspired me to um, delve into this topic today. So a few weeks ago, maybe about a month ago now or something, I saw this article and I was like, okay, I definitely wanted to talk about this article and I will link it in the description below. So basically this took place in the UK. It, um, what basically happened was there were vegan activists who formed a human chain, um, to block the meat owl at, at a supermarket. Um, so let me just quickly recap the story for you. Um, let's see. So the incident took place at the Waitrose in a, which is a name of a supermarket, took place in Brighton, East Sussex in Southeast England. Uh, the vegan activists decided to barricade the supermarket's meat section, preventing shoppers um, from packs of meat, chicken, turkey, and all other meat products, right? In addition to that, they brought plates of blood. So I'm guessing it was fake blood. Um, and because if it's real blood, then that literally is, it's hypocritical. It goes against your point. Anyway, and placards declaring, humane murder is a lie. And it's not food, it's violence. So basically there's no good way to kill. Killing is killing. And I'll put up pictures as I talk about this article. So these activists were from the Direct Action Everywhere group who recently staged a steakhouse protest where they made um, customers listen to screams of dying cows. Um, although they didn't bring the same creepy music to the supermarket, they used a loudspeaker to yell at shoppers trying to purchase meat. Um, so this is um, one of the things they said. So they said, animals are not things, lives are not commodities. It's time to end these cruel and bloody traditions. Take the death of your plate this Christmas. Um, animals are not things. Lives are, oh, okay, yeah, basically the same thing. That's That was their basic message. Um, the, these activists also brought flowers for the dead turkeys. They informed shoppers that birds are killed between nine and 21 weeks old when their natural lifespan is 10 years. Hmm. Well, it is true, I mean, yeah. So despite their best and arguably disturbing efforts, the vegan activists couldn't fully prevent shoppers from buying meat. The police arrived to end the protest, although no arrests were made. A spokesperson for Waitrose later clarified that the supermarket makes sure that the turkeys are treated humanely before they die. <laughs> we pride ourselves in exceptional animal welfare with our turkeys farmed to high standards at farms we know and trust. The spokesperson added that Waitrose is a holder of compassion in World Farming's Retailer of the Year and also tops the business benchmark on farm animal welfare. Just basically fancy words to cover up, you know, um, dirty stuff that goes on behind the scenes. Um, I think that's how vegans are going to see that. They don't really care how well you take care of these animals. The fact is you're killing these animals 
um, prior to their natural lifespan and most of the time it happens in an inhumane way the conditions that these animals are put in I know especially for poultry like with chickens chickens need to roam around freely they need a lot of space and land because they're just very active animals but normally these animals tend to be caged in very enclosed like you restricting spaces and that can be pretty claustrophobic and just not good because it leads to a lot of fights and just lots of tensions and it's just not comfortable for them you know um and that's the thing we don't attribute such feelings to animals we don't care about whether it's comfortable or not or whatever it is the only animals that people truly care about and basically worship are dogs and cats you know domesticated animals those are the ones that people really care about but at the end of the day people would still leave those animals or you know do what they can to benefit them if it means like leaving that animal out you know no matter how much you have tried to you know make your pet as closely as possible so um yeah so the first question that i wanted to delve into was are vegetarian slash vegan diets healthier than meat eaters Be yeah so are vegetarian slash vegan diets healthier than those of meat eaters um so for a long time basically since the dawn of mankind um you know we have been omnivor um omnivorous um so an omnivore as you know is basically an organism that's able to eat both plants and animals right and, and that's it so it's always been naturally we've eaten meat but we've also, but we've also eaten you know plant-based products um if you're a christian you know then technically vegan um slash vegetarian actually vegan is actually the first ever diet because when adam and eve were in the garden of eden they weren't eating any animals it was just water and like fruits and vegetables and things of the garden but then shit got fucked up and then we became omnivores but that's just how it goes christian perspective by the way so i did some research and i wanted to share some facts with you so are vegetarian slash vegan diets better than those of meat eaters is it healthier to become vegan and the answer is pretty complicated. So the answer that I got was vegetarian diets can be unhealthy if you're not careful. So they can be healthy if they're done right. They can be healthier, but they tend not to be healthier. Or it could be sort of on the same level, you know, if it's really not done right. Actually, if it's not done right, it's, it's always unhealthier than those of a person who is a meat eater. So according to the Academy of Nutrition and Diet, Diet, Dietetics, an evidence, um, emphasis on evidence, right? An evidence-based review showed that a vegetarian diet is associated with a lower risk of death from ischemic heart disease. Um, they appear to have lower density lipoprotein um, cholesterol levels, so people who have um, vegetarian diets or vegan. Um, they also tend to show lower blood pressure and lower rates of hypertension, um, also lower rates of type 2 diabetes um, than meat eaters. They also tend to have a lower BMI, so body mass index, which is basically how, you know, scientifically, I guess, we're supposed to have a certain weight for a certain height, um, but that's also shown to be, you know, um, controversial. But anyway, um, lower overall cancer rates and lower risk of chronic disease in general. Vegetarians also have to work harder to get key nutrients, which is the big thing, like protein, fatty acids, iron, zinc, iod um, iodine, calcium, and vitamins D and B12, um, which are all nutrients that you can just naturally get from animal products or animal byproducts such as you know different types of dairy like yo um, yogurt eggs and all that stuff uh vegans must eat must must eat soy protein because soy protein is the only protein other than animal protein that is as complete as you know animal protein so when i did zoology last semester we actually learned about this when we were talking about nutrition so there are essential amino acids that we need to our body and the amino acids are the building blocks of proteins that are basically like sort of 
I guess you would say like the most important nutrient, like you know, proteins are found in all cells. We need proteins. They perform so many functions, your know, enzymes and all that stuff. So there are about nine to eleven essential like amino acids that excuse me, that our bodies can't produce. And so we can get these directly from meat. So if you do eat meat, you can get the um, all of these essential amino acids. It's easy. Um, it's either you get all 11 of them from meat or you get about nine of them from meat. And then maybe two of them you would naturally get from like vegetables that you eat on a daily basis or something like that. So that's already the convenience of uh, being an omnivore, being um, a meat eater, is that you get all these nutrients easily. You don't have to, you know, second guess, you know, and think, oh, I really need to eat like this to get this. It's like, you know, it's easy. Um, but as someone who would be vegan or, you know, vegetarian, you would have to um, go take the extra step of making sure that you're eating the required amount of nutrients that you need in order to survive. So it's all about balance at the end of the day. And that's why, you know, there's always this emphasis on a balanced diet. You know what I mean? Um, so overall, neither diet is like nece is necessarily healthier than the other because technically, when you talk about health, you're, you know, a healthy diet, you're basically talking about a balanced diet that is all the nutrients you need. It's easier to get a balanced diet, a healthy diet from an omnivorous diet. In actual fact, an omnivorous diet would have more nutrients, um, you know, readily available than a vegetarian slash vegan diet. So technically, omnivorous diets are healthier, but when vegan slash vegetarian diets are done right, they're, uh, they, they tend to be healthier for us you know, in terms of like the effects that come about because it has shown that, you know, when you adapt to those diets, you tend to lose weight faster and it's really good for you. You know, I, I definitely don't deny the health benefits. They are definitely there, but I feel like, not even feel like, you can definitely still be healthier, lose weight, have a good BMI, all that stuff. If you also just reduce your meat, uh, meat intake, you know, or stick to an omnivorous diet. So, so there are ways to cut things or make adjustments here and there. Try to eat like more vegetables and less of the meat or have lots of like, I don't know, I'm not a nutritionist, <laughs> but I am currently trying to be fit or trying to lose weight and stuff. So I guess this is important stuff to think about actually. Huh. So that's pretty, it's actually helpful for me. Who knows? Would have known. Anyway. So the next question is, um, so obviously being that um, this video is about, you know, should we become vegan to save the planet? A question rolling through your mind at this point is, how does veganism relate to saving the planet? How does it relate to um, climate change and global warming, you know, in general, right? So this is through animal agriculture. So the next question, big question is, how does animal agriculture and eating meat contribute to global warming? Now, animal agriculture is responsible for 13 to 18 percent of human-caused greenhouse gas emissions um, globally, um, and this is uh, this has shown to be like more prevalent like in developing nations than developed nations. But either way, that's the overall number across the world. Then the other 64 percent um, that contributes to global warming is obvious, obviously through fossil fuel combustion. And then the last 18% is natural or greenhouse gas emissions that have taken place for millions of years that you know, the Earth naturally does. Because, you know, greenhouse gas emissions are always there. We, we, we can't get rid of them completely. We actually do need them, you know, because that's the thing with a lot of these things, like with nutrients or, or, or things that are leading to um, sort of bad effects in the world, whether bad effects on the human level or on the global level for the Earth or whatever. We do need these things, a certain amount of it, but once you go over that, it becomes disastrous. So it's about trying to maintain um, a certain levels and keeping it at that and trying not to go over that, but also trying not to go under. So yeah, it's a tough thing. Um, balance. Um, and then from just other research that I did, um, how animal agriculture actually relates to um, global warming is that um, there's deforestation that happens 
which is caused by the expansion of pasture land and arable land used to grow feed crops. Um, and also all of this land is needed for um, um, grazing animals and, you know, herding uh, cattle and, you know, other animals too. So overall, animal agriculture is responsible for 9% of human-caused CO2 carbon dioxide emissions uh, globally. Uh, ruminant animals like cattle um, produce uh, methane. I'm pretty sure some of you have read about this if you've taken your science classes in high school. Uh, methane is a greenhouse gas which is actually about 20 times more potent than carbon dioxide. So producing beef uh, actually requires significantly more resources like land, fertilizer, and water. So it's just wasting all these resources more to try and get the beef that we get in supermarkets and in fast food restaurants and all that stuff. Um, eating vegetables produces lower greenhouse gas emissions as you've been guessing by the trajectory of you know these articles that I'm reading. Um, and the question is, why? Well, it's pretty obvious. It's because it's more efficient to grow a crop and eat it than to grow a crop, feed it to an animal as it builds up muscle mass and then eat the animal. Because that's basically the process is, um, we are trying to gain access to the best like meat in, in its best form, make it as healthy or juicy for us. But that process has proven to be, you know, bad for the environment. I guess good for us because we're getting good meat that also tastes super delicious and, you know, giving us access to all of that meat in like, you know, great forms and burgers and papa chicken sandwiches and chick and all that stuff. But um, it just begs the question of at what cost? You know, that's always the question rolling through my mind, rolling through everyone's mind, at what cost? You know, um... You know, because we really shouldn't compromise the health of our, um, the health of, you know, our, of the human population. We need to do what we can to make the world a better place for us and for, you know, future generations. And I sound like a broken radio, but it's, it's really, it's really, you know, that's really the thing at the end of the day. Making things better for all of the organisms on this planet. Because the earth in itself doesn't need us. You know, the, the earth has the earth has been there long before us and it will be there long after us if they, you know, if, a, if we do reach a point where, you know, there's human extinction, you know, finally after whatever evolution, I'm not sure, whatever. But, you know, the earth will always be there. Um, but whether we are there or not, you know, um, the earth doesn't need us. And, it, and actually it's been shown in fact, in my um, genetics class, you know, we're doing some presentations about just any sort of topic you want to talk about in genetics and present on it. Um, and so one of the students, this girl, she was talking about um, Chernobyl, you know, in the Ukraine, the thing that happened in the 90s or 80s. It happened in 1986 with the big nuclear reaction and all that stuff. And she was talking about how when humans left the area and all that stuff, animals actually survived better some animals actually survived better like in those um you know very radioactive you know areas like in, in chernobyl they survived better without people there than if people were there so it just begs the question of damn so are do, would animals like live better are you telling me that animals would even live better in radioactive areas like with all this radiation that if humans are there so it just shows the amount of impact that we have on life on this you know planet and how much impact we have on the planet in general and um basically what i think is you know if you had asked me Shasha, would you ever become vegan would you ever become vegetarian no i wouldn't um do i think it's necessary um i think it is important to reduce our meat intake. I think that's very important. I think we do need to do that. I think we need to reduce the amount of, you know, meat that we do eat. Um, I think it's important to make a few changes here and there, you know, it's, it's all about reduction um, and, and trying to uplift something and reduce something else. But would I ever, would I ever be vegan? No. Would I ever be vegetarian? Yeah, at certain periods of time and I could have days where I could go vegan if I wanted to. 
Um, I think also we just need to also find other sources of nutrition that we need to get used to so that once you get used to eating those more and more, whether it's through eating insects more or eating sort of more plant-based plant foods more, if I guess people start getting used to eating stuff like that, then we won't have as much of a dependency on meat and we can actually reduce it, not take it away completely. We definitely need our meat, but I think measures do need to be brought in to try curve, um, you know, animal agriculture and, and you know, and, and just animals are always going to be killed. You know, that's something that's just always going to happen. And if you're in a place where you don't have any viable plants to eat, but you've got meat in front of you, you've captured an animal, you're gonna eat that animal. So it's something you can't really stop. You know, we have to be realistic with ourselves. Um, but also, if you are a vegan or vegetarian, don't make fun of or make people who are meat eaters feel guilty for eating meat. Because for basically all of us, we were raised to eat it. Like that's just how it was as well. So it's not an easy thing to, you know, get rid of when that's been your whole life. I mean, for me, for the past 21 years, that's how it's been. So, um, yeah, you know, don't make them feel guilty. Tell them definitely the reality of the situation, but don't do it in such a condescending manner. Be like, oh, I'm way better than you because I'm vegan or whatever it is. Like, damn, no bitch. Like, no. Yes. I need my milk. I need my Oreos. I need my cereal. I need, I need, I need all my burgers and my shit. Now I'm just going off on the tangent. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, stay tuned for the upcoming videos that should be coming this week as well. Um, I really enjoyed filming this for you. And um, hope you guys have, you know, a great rest of your week and a good day. Bye. Shazi gang, I am clear.